We are delighted to share with you um, today a conversation between Anna Janik, our artist, and Natasha Ritzma. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about each of them. Um, as many of you who've been here before or were at the opening know, Anna um, has shown broadly. Um, she's been in more than 20 solo shows and over 100 group exhibitions in the United States and Croatia. Her work is in numerous private and public collections in the United States, Croatia, Italy, Germany, China, and Australia, and probably lots of other places. And she has gallery representation in New York, Chicago, and Denver and Des Moines. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I work with her. I've learned so much about her work and her process putting up this show with her because she has such a strong vision. Now, Anna's education, um, she, well, she was born and educated in Croatia, and she earned a Master of Fine Arts from the Academy of Fine Arts at the University of Zagreb in 2002, and she's been in the United States since 2003, and you just recently became a U.S. citizen, right? That's correct. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it is such an honor to have Natasha Ritzma with us. Natasha is the director of the Shingo Center at Aurora University. She's a board member of the St. Charles Arts Council and the Aurora Public Arts Commission. She's curated more than a dozen art exhibitions in Chicago, featuring eras such as Alice Hargrave, Jeffrey Woolen, Tamika Lewis, and Steve Shapiro. She has her PhD from Indiana University and her master's from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Yes. So without further ado, Anna and Natasha. How do you start a new work? Do you have an idea ahead of time of what it might end up looking like, or does it take on a life of its own as you're creating it? Um, I feel that um, what I'm really drawn to uh, when I create is a sense of uh, improvisation and, mm -hmm. and freedom. This is what I love about the work. So uh, I would say I don't have any idea where it's going. But that is a very simple <laughs> answer. <laughs> Usually I will, something will spark my interest about a particular color scheme. It does have to do with color a lot. That's kind of like I think often initiates a new series. Now you don't see, I, I think I have maybe three or four pieces from several mm -hmm. series, but I do have, you know, some series like Flush Nebula that is really pink, and, mm -hmm. and like the whole series is like that. So I feel it's very improvisational in a way that there's a hint, and like the parameter is, you know, this is going to be a blush or pink series, mm -hmm. and I'm going to improvise and see where mm -hmm. it takes me. And then usually a series can, you know, I can be preoccupied with the series for a year or two mm -hmm. and make, you know, 15, 20 pieces, and then kind of I, I let go. Mm -hmm. Or with some series, which I feel like with origin series, uh, it just, I go back to it mm -hmm. always. And I'm interested in, you know, making more and more and, and more. Um, so I think it's a mix of uh, being, you know, sp very spontaneous mm -hmm. about it, but about each separate piece. But then also I do set parameters. Yeah. One um, thing I find so interesting about your practice, so I did a studio visit with Anna, and I know you work on multiple pieces I at do. the same time. Can I you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, watercolor is very time frame specific mm -hmm. medium. So some things, uh, at least the way I, I mean, the way I work is I'm really interested in uh, creating one part of the painting really quickly mm -hmm. and usually it's wet and wet and you have to manipulate and decide, make decisions like really fast. Mm -hmm. And then once that part is kind of settled and completely dried, then comes, uh, you know, second part where I usually layer. Some of the works are almost like in one breath, you know, you'll have like wet and wet and I do a quick sweep of color mm -hmm. and then once it dries or in between drying and like in between being a little bit still moist and, and dry, mm -hmm. I will add the marks. And with some pieces, you know, like this one, mm -hmm. this one was just one sweep, you know, and once it dry, with a little bit of uh, indigo accent there and a little bit of like this rusty uh, burnt umber. But it all, you know, the sweep ca happened really fast and the decision to leave it that way. And then I think this piece is interesting in particular. I think it's that one. Because I think I did that as a sketch. It was like 2011, and it was just in my drawer with many of those mm -hmm. pieces. And then, um, you know, this year I was going through th some of them, and I uh, added the pencil marks and the the burn marks. So this piece is like you know 2011, and then 2021 or 22, something like that. 
So it's re it really varies. Mm -hmm. Some of the work just happens quickly and I'm done. And some I like, but I don't feel it's um, resolved. Mm -hmm. But I don't dislike it, so mm -hmm. I will just let it stay, you know, and kind of wait. And sometimes nothing happens, and sometimes it's kind of, you know, it speaks to me and says, okay, you know, you can, you can move on <laughs> and do something with it. So, um, yeah, I think there's always an element of really being spontaneous about it. That's my approach, at least, you know. I don't like anything rigid in, in my own work. I love that you return to a piece after 10 years and then are spontaneous again. I know. It's, I don't movie. usually, I don't yeah. do that often, but yeah. I do, I, I give myself freedom. You know, it's yeah. my work, it's my studio. Yeah. I can do whatever I want to. And that, you know, <laughs> it's really, it's, it's, it's empower. It's an empowering yeah. feeling that, you yeah. know, so. <laughs> and this was the first, this really big piece was the first um, in my re-series paintings. I just, you know, I unrolled my paper roll, watercolor paper roll, I knew I wanted to make a big piece. And so, and, and I mean, the piece did not happen quickly. My decision <laughs> happened quickly to make it. Uh, yeah, that one, you know, like obviously as you can probably see, um, I'm just gonna go there to, to show you and then I'll come back. This is not gonna be on camera, but it doesn't matter. But uh, so, you know, this part, this is literally, you know, lots of water mm -hmm. color dripping. Uh, and that's manipulated really fast. Mm -hmm. You know, that's exactly like when you spill something, mm -hmm. that is really fast. And you know, when it starts drying and it's somewhere in between, then you know, I apply these marks that are still, you know, in the when paper is wet. And then, you know, once all of it is all of it is wet, uh, well, it's dry, I will go and I will add these um, kind of elliptical and like these kinds of other shapes, um, mm -hmm. and they, and then I add, you know, I add one or two, and then I let it sit, and then I leave it sitting in my studio for a while. So, so this one's been in the making, you know, probably year and a half, maybe two mm -hmm. years, just because I, I like to let it sit and, you know, um, ferment <laughs> uh, until it feels like everything is just the way I want it. And, uh, and it maybe sounds funny because the work is loose and spontaneous. Mm -hmm. So it do, I, I'm sure uh, maybe it's not the first um, uh, a feeling when somebody's looking at my mm -hmm. work that I'm making a lot of decisions. Mm -hmm. But actually I am, you know. It, it has to appeal to me. And, and at some point I feel I'm content and I, and I don't need to do anything else. And that's when I stop. So. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that you were talking about watercolor paper, but then I also see you use ginkgo paper. Mm -hmm. Is, what's your choice, or why do you choose two different kinds, or mm -hmm. what do you notice when you're working on both? Mediums? I love, always love trying out new uh, papers. It's just, you know, the way, it's like a kid in a candy store. I think <laughs> most artists do like that. You know, you go to the art supply store or door online. I, I, to this day, I always uh, try out new shades, new brands, new things. I, I feel, you know, I need to always discover something new uh, and be drawn to something new. And, and not necessarily, like, I have a lot of, you know, colors that I tried and they're in my box because it didn't, you know, resonate with me yet, maybe it won't, but uh, so Yupo is something that I started working on uh, maybe like seven years ago or so. A friend, an artist, introduced uh, me with, with that uh, particular paper. It's, it's a type of plastic material. Um, they claim that it's biodegradable, so I don't know exactly what the chemical, you know, how it works, but um, the the UPO is amazing in a way that it's extremely smooth. It does not uh, soak up the paint at all. So everything stays on the surface, and it's very crisp and it's really elegant. And there is it's kind of like the work and then the whiteness. So that is one feel that UPO uh, gives. And I feel the this uh, these panels that are also specifically they're called clay clayboard. So the surface is also prepared in a way that it's completely smooth. Uh, I really enjoy how 
when I do the mark making, it glides so nicely. That that's what I love about it the most. And I love with Yupo that it. I almost feel that there's a contrast of um, the visual elements that are almost, you know, a little bit ancient, and then super modern. You know, like this juxtaposition of something in my work, the mark making, that feels like old scripts almost. But then the material that it's made on is modern. It's new. It's new material. Like it didn't exist. You know last century it was not here so I think it is significant because it, it's a sign of our time too and then the watercolor papers I have tried so many different uh, papers and I still try new ones because I just love you know each brand has a, a little bit you know an off-white or a bright white or it can be a very textured or hot press or cold press so I do have to say I, I use various watercolor uh, papers and the feeling is different than Yupo because Yupo is as I said very pre it's pristine and then paper has more of an organic feel you know the waves kind of that happen when the water uh, when when it dries um, I like embracing that as well you know I love that it's not always perfectly smooth and perfectly straight and so so those would be uh, that's the difference I feel between the paper and the Yupo a um, quick question to you. Uh, all this artwork, if I understand, is yours, you create it yourself. Do you collaborate with other artists? And if you do, no. do you have any desire to ever That's a very with quick no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. 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 What's the reason behind it? Uh, the reason behind it is my personality. I, I can only work completely by myself, and I get very distracted by anything else but my own voice, you know? I feel everything else um, is a big distraction, and that's something, obviously, that, you know, I also learned about myself through, you know, going to art school, being among other artists, being in the same studio with more artists. Uh, you know, repeatedly over the years, I noticed that distractions are not good for me because I don't seek some outside inspiration. The work, my work is very, it, it reflects my inside, um, you know, feelings or ideas or notions and impulses, and I feel everything else is just distracting me from, from doing the work the way I enjoy doing it and that I feel is most sincere. <laughs>